As much as I love the Switch, one of the biggest problems the system has as a handheld, and we've talked about this a couple times, is comfort levels. The shape of the Joy-Cons attached to the Switch tablet is just not a great feeling. I mean, yes, you can play games on it, but it just over time doesn't feel great on your hands. And so there have been numerous things that have been released to try and address this. Now we've talked about these before for the regular Switch, but with the release of the Switch OLED, a lot of stuff that worked previously doesn't work anymore. And so now there's new products coming out, most of which are just adjusted in size a bit to account for the OLED's wider length. But for those of you that are new Switch OLED owners or are thinking of getting a Switch OLED soon, I wanted to look over what options are available for this platform in order to really give you the best on the go handheld experience. Now there's two different main routes that you can really go with this. You can either get a grip that attaches to the Switch OLED's body itself in order to add actual grips that are more comfortable, or you can get an alternative to Joy-Cons in the form of larger controllers. And I'm gonna talk about my favorites from each of these main areas. And we're gonna start with the grips, because this is where we get into some of the newer options that have been released for the system. Now, with the Switch in the past, there's two main companies that have really fallen back on and talked about time and time again, and they're still really my favorite options when it comes to grip options on the Switch, uh, and that is Satisfy and Skull & Co. Now, since the last time I covered these two companies, one thing has changed in that one of the companies, Skull & Co., actually has two different grip options you can buy now. And so I wanna talk about both of those and how those stack up against the Satisfy option. Uh, with Skull & Co., they have what is called the grip case, the more traditional style that I've used in the past from them, and then the more recently released Neo Grip, which I did review as like a standalone accessory when the Switch OLED dropped, but it is really interesting to see how it compares to some of these other options. The approach of the grip case is something that acts as an overall case for the Switch body itself. It's not just focused on that grip aspect. And so it's an actual very kind of soft plastic that wraps around the entire body of the Switch OLED with a pair of grips on each side. Now, the big strengths of the grip case versus some of the other options on here are A, it's probably the most fully protective solution out of the group. None of these is really a per protective case, but out of them, I think the grip case does the best job of it because it is a full plastic shell that goes around the full body of the switch. The front face is still exposed, but at least it adds a little bit of a front spacing to it to protect the screen a little better. On top of that, both Skull & Co options do give you the ability to swap between three different grip sizes. There is a very shallow small one that just adds the tiniest of little curvature to the back of it. There's a more pronounced larger grip that feels more like a traditional controller. And then the default one that's connected feels like a traditional controller, but also with a little kind of trigger design to it so that it feels like a controller with triggers and not just a pair of handlebars that you're holding on to. What's nice about this is that if you're not sure about what kind of grip size is gonna feel most comfortable for you, this gives you options all in one case so that when you order it, you can try each one and figure out which one is the best fit for you. Or maybe there's even some situations where you like one more than another. One change from the past grip designs is that whereas before these grip cases had an attached shoulder button that was a part of the case, now they are standalone smaller pieces that are completely removable, which is kind of nice for the option, but it also makes them something that's very easy to lose. Uh, in fact, I actually lost mine before I started shooting B-roll for this video, so that's why you're not seeing them. Oops. As for the newer option from Skull & Co, there is the Neo Grip case. Now what really differentiates this one from the other two options is that it's the lightest weight option out of the group. Uh, it's a very small, minimal body. It's basically just the back brace to go around the body of the OLED, and then hard plastic grips on each side that are the same as the trigger-shaped grips that come with the grip case. Now, like with the grip case, this does kind of violate the one rule that bothers me a little bit in that it has small, losable pieces. Uh, in this case though, instead of being the pads that go over the shoulder buttons, it's a little piece of plastic that basically acts as a locking mechanism to make sure that it stays as snug as possible on the Switch OLED. I have used this grip without the locking mechanism and it's fine. It's primarily a situation where let's say you dropped your Switch while it was occupying the case. Uh, this little plastic nub is gonna make sure that it stays in place inside the grip better instead of popping out of it and possibly leading to even more damage. Now, what's really cool about the Neo Grip case is that because it is intentionally the kind of smallest and trimmest out of the group, uh, it is the only one out of these three options that I'm talking about that allows you to use the Switch OLED kickstand. It's specifically designed to leave the entire bottom back of the Switch OLED exposed. So if you still want to use the kickstand kind of tabletop mode of the Switch OLED, that's an option with the Neo Grip case. It's also worth pointing out that both the Neo Grip and Grip cases from Skull & Co can fit 
get the Switch stock while they're being worn on the Switch OLED itself. One small warning I feel like it's worth mentioning for this though is that because they do increase the thickness of the Switch OLED a little bit, you do run into a situation where it feels like the Switch OLED screen has a much better chance of rubbing against the front of a Switch stock, which as everyone knows, is a really easy way to accidentally scratch the front of your Switch. A major solution to this, buy a screen protector. Honestly, everyone should have a screen protector on their Switches anyways, just to make sure that screen is nice and pristine as long as possible. Uh, but that is one thing worth noting. So you can dock the Switch with either of these cases on, just maybe have a little more care, or if you're really worried about it, pop it out of the case. Then there is, of course, the Zen Grip from Satisfy. In the past, when I've compared Satisfy to Skull & Co, I've walked away saying that the Satisfy is my preferred one out of the group, and that's mostly still true now. Uh, and it ultimately really comes down to one concept, comfort. Uh, at the end of the day, in terms of prolonged use, I have found that for me personally, the grip design on the Satisfy does end up working out a lot better, and this primarily comes from two things. Uh, one, the shape of the grip and the fact that it uses an offset design, slightly offset, uh, and the materials that it's made out of. See, for the Skull & Co, the grips for both the Neo Grip and the Grip Case are made out of a hard plastic, whereas the Satisfy uses a hard plastic for the main body, but then uses a softer plastic for what you're actually holding onto in the grip itself, which over time does really make a difference. As for the grip shape, the really big benefit here is that the grip types are actually asymmetrical. They don't perfectly match. And the reason for that is because how you're using your thumb on your left and your right hand isn't the exact same. On the left side, the grip is shaped to prioritize leaving your thumb on the left stick because the vast majority of Switch games are going to use the left stick. For the right hand though, depending on what kind of game you're playing, you're either gonna have your thumb on the right stick a lot or you're gonna be using the ABXY a lot. So the shape of the grip on the right side is tilted a little bit differently so it kind of favors you being able to use either of them, whereas the left one is all favored towards the stick and ultimately just leads to a very nice, comfortable experience. Using all these grips recently back to back again, I'm walking away with the same kind of final conclusion that the Satisfy is ultimately the more comfortable option, but I do really want to give a little bit more props to Skull & Co in terms of certain functional features that I think are really nice depending on your use case. Uh, for one, if you like the idea of a grip that you can attach to the Switch and just leave on it, whether you're putting it in the dock, putting it in a case, or just using it on the go, that is something that you can do with the Skull & Co that you can't with the Satisfy. The Satisfy body is just a bit too big to fit in a traditional dock. And again, the Neo Grip is the only one out of these three options that allows you to use the kickstand. So if tabletop play is something that you actually use on the Switch, that's the only one that's gonna let you use it while still being attached to the Switch body itself. Me personally, I use handheld mode basically 90% of the time with my Switch, so the Satisfy ends up being the better option, but I do think Skull & Co offers a little bit of an advantage when it comes to that more kind of switching between different styles approach. Now, a different direction you could take things is instead of buying a grip case that just makes the body of the Switch more comfortable, you could replace the Joy-Cons on the Switch with third-party options that are larger in shape and just overall much more comfortable to use. And there are some trade-offs here that I think are beneficial, but also drawbacks to keep in mind compared to using a grip. Uh, first off, there's the fact that if you're not using the official Joy-Cons, you are gonna be losing out on some features. For instance, the ability to use the NFC reader if you ever find yourself using Amiibo, or really I think the biggest loss potentially, Rumble. There are third-party options that do come with a Rumble feature, but it's not really the same as the HD Rumble built into Joy-Cons. So even in options that offer a Rumble option, it's not gonna be the same as going the official route. With that in mind though, there are also benefits that these third-party options tend to offer that the Joy-Cons don't. For instance, not only is the overall body of them larger and more comfortable, but they also tend to feature larger, more pronounced stick heads, which allows for more refined control compared to the very tiny control stick that is on the Joy-Con. Also, both of the third-party options that I personally enjoy using, the Hori Split Pad Pro and the Binbok Joy-Cons, also offer the benefit of remappable buttons on the backside, giving you a little more control options in some games, which some people find to be very useful. Now, in terms of these specific options, uh, the main two, again, that I really like are the Split Pad Pro and the Binbok Joy-Cons, and the main kind of decision here is officially licensed versus off-brand. Uh, with the officially licensed, which is the Split Pad Pro from Hori, I personally find these ones to be a little more comfortable. They also come in a variety of different designs, including just simple plain color ones if you want something simple, or ones that celebrate some specific franchises like Pokemon or Animal Crossing. So there's some cool stuff there. With the Binbok, there's not as much design variety, but in terms of feature list at the same price point, 
there actually is some interesting stuff here that the Split Pad Pro loses out on. Uh, they offer a vibration, not the same as the HD Rumble and Joy-Con, but still a form of vibration versus the none in the Split Pad Pro, and they can actually be used wireless. I think for a lot of people, especially if you don't care about stuff being officially licensed, the Binbok is the go-to choice because at the same price, you're getting a more robust feature list. Uh, but personally, I actually do use the Split Pad Pro more often, and that mostly comes down to the fact that I do still find them to be the more comfortable of the two from my hands personally. And again, since I'm mostly playing my Switch in handheld mode, that's the benefit I'm getting out of it. If I want to use wireless controllers with the Switch and dock, then I'll switch over to a more traditional Pro controller. At the end of the day, these are all solid options that I think take care of the main issue they're trying to address, comfort on the Switch OLED in handheld mode. Any of them is going to be better than just relying on the Switch system just as it is regularly. As always, all of these products that I've talked about are linked down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to let me know, or hit the dislike if you didn't like it. And if you want to see more content, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and we'll see you guys later.